on that survey, but I'll just let you know that what we saw on that um, was very helpful because what we learned in the conversations that we had with you all kind of confirmed a lot of what we saw there. First, you know, one of the questions was, you know, words that we would use to describe Pulaski as a place. And you can see a lot of the really positive um, adjectives, community friendly, potential, potential was something that really came up over and over and over again. Small town, historic, friendly, really charming and, and special place. And you could tell people really had, um, had some really good thoughts about the community. Asked questions about images, things that you, what image that would really describe this community as a place. The courthouse, you see that a lot um, throughout the community and some of the graphics. Mountains, obviously, you know, you, you have this backdrop drop of mountains behind you. This train station, which is a beautiful piece of architecture um, and a great story as well. And then the new things like, or, or at least the renewed things like uh, Calfee Park and all of that. All of these things really went into our creative process as we were asking ourselves, okay, what type of message, what type of image do we need to use to project this community? Did ask a question about perception of uh, Pulaski, and I forget exactly what the numbers are here. And I'll tell you, this question was about outsiders' perspective. So we asked you all to project on your neighbors and what they thought of this community. And you can see here that um, you know, probably about three quarters of that fell in somewhat negative, the negative range. Um, one of the great things was is, is in those discussions beginning with our very first meeting with the management team, we could see that you all feel really positive about this community, particularly the, um, the potential that we have here, the opportunities that we have here. But you also realize that there may be this negative perception that we may need to overcome externally, but also maybe even internally with some of uh, the people that live around here. Is our image communicated well? Well, the vast majority said no. Well, that's why we're here. You know, to give you the tools to help communicate that image. And then the last slide I'll show is just some comments that came up, very positive comments that came up both in the survey as well as in our conversations that we've had with you all over the last few days. Come flourish with us, where our roots grow deep and the branches reach for the sky. That was somebody's suggestion for a tagline for the community. Very positive. We're old world charm meets modern day aspirations. That says a lot about what we've learned about your community. You know, obviously, you've got this, this deep heritage here. You see it with the architecture. We learned it with the history that's interpreted to us, but we also see all this new that's popping up here. New investment, new opportunities, new ideas. And that really is, it leads or sort of wraps up with a number of key comments that came up over and over about the potential about the opportunity, about we have pioneers that have invested here. This is a place for trendsetters. We can be on the leading edge here in this community. We see that, we realize that, we're starting to see that with some of the people and business owners that have come here in the community. And then we're, we feel like that through this process, through this, uh, th this planning process in particular, that we have a new energy, a renewed energy, and we think that we're primed now to really see some success with the revitalization of our community. All right, and then from there, one of the things that I always like to do is I like to look at the things that already exist. And as Aaron just shared with you, um, the question about how is the, the message communicated. There are a lot of communicators. There are a lot of people who are talking about what they're doing. But those messages are simply going into all the other messages that are being thrown and yelled and projected at our citizens today. It is difficult to communicate to folks because they do have so many things that are coming their way, especially with social media and text messaging. And it, people are being barraged with messages. So as you can see, we've got a couple things we just pulled out. We've got the the current kind of town logo featuring this uh, train depot. We've got the county seal. We've got identities like the community view, the process that you all have gone through, the chamber logo, 
the county-wide tourism logo, the farmer's market, Pulaski on Main, Pulaski, you know, just different things from around the community. All good, but very, very little coordination. So when they're not coordinated, they're not echoing that it's necessarily coming from the same place. And sadly, typically, our audience is not connecting the dots the way we want to. We've got to make it really clear. Crystal clear, sometimes more clear than you would ever imagine you have to make it. Um, best example I can share is that I go into communities all the time. When I interview them about their downtown, they say, nothing ever happens downtown. Our downtown is dead. And I say, well, last weekend there was a festival and, and you had 12,000 people downtown. Oh, yeah, the festival is amazing. We love the festival. Nothing ever happens downtown. Except for the 12,000 people that were here last weekend. You've got to figure out a way to connect those dots. Now, in addition to that, you, you, have some, you have some things that kind of get handed to you. Uh, you are named after a person whose name ends with SKI, <laughs> which you're not going to change names. Nobody's ever let me change their name. I've tried a couple times, um, and it's never happened. One of the things that's interesting about that is your name does help to dictate some of the design selections that you in fact, one of the things that we had heard over and over again was we had heard a lot about the industrial history and, and sometimes this idea of this connection with the industry and, and manufacturing, it, it lends you into a certain look and feel, but every time I would explore typefaces that might harken back to that particular genre, the combination of those typefaces and a word ending in SKI ended up giving it too much of a Russian kind of almost communist era feeling. <laughs> and I didn't think that's the direction we wanted to go. You know? so, um, so you do have to understand where those name origins come from and the different things, but luckily we're not going to force everybody to have that fancy tiny little mustache or anything like that. But understanding where your identity comes from is something that is very, very important to, to going through the community. And then in addition to that, I think one of the biggest things that we heard over and over again was Pulaski Furniture, Pulaski Furniture, Pulaski Furniture. We know it was an industry that was here, we know it was an industry that shared our name, and we know there's an industry that's gone. They left us. They left us behind. They're monuments to their exit that we drive past every day. Large monuments that shape our skyline, that remind us every day that we lost them. So we know that part of the reason that three quarters of your community said that the external perception might be negative is because of constant reminders of past loss instead of the excitement and momentum of the things that are happening now. So that's really what we wanted to focus in on with our recommendations. Um, very quickly, one of the things that we try to do when we develop a community branding system is we believe that there are four fundamental areas of, that help to create a solid foundation. Color palette, creating identified colors that you can use to connect those dots. Colors are huge, huge connectors. I went to the University of South Carolina, Aaron went to Clemson. Clint, Aaron loves to find ways to put orange and purple in his presentation. <laughs> you know, those, that, that color coordination, that color connection is something that people are, are very familiar with. And it's an easy way for you to create relationships without forcing people to always look alike, which I think is one of the biggest fears when we work with communities. The second, uniform typefaces. When communities go through processes of creating logos, the biggest thing they think about is what's our picture? What's our graphic? We got to have, I mean, if we worked in Sumter, South Carolina, if anybody's ever been to Sumter, you know they're the Hummershaw Air Force Base. I walked into a community whose logo was an opera house, an iris, a swan, and an F-16. Because <laughs> they sat around a table and they listed off everything that was important to them, and then they slapped them all in the graphic. And they never paid the first bit of attention to what typeface they were using. So as long as it had that opera house, that iris, that swan, and that F-16, it's something. And they looked different every single time. So we put a lot of focus on on creating a stable of typefaces 
that allow us to use those to create visual connection as well. The third consistent message. How are we going to talk about this community? Now, Aaron and I spent a lot of time talking about messaging because if you know anything about branding, you probably have heard a professional say, a brand is a promise. It is a relationship and it is a covenant that you have with your customers, with your residents, with your visitors, with your investors. And if you make a claim and you do not deliver on that claim, you have a breach of trust. And that breach of trust goes into your character. So we had to be very, very mindful about what we wanted to say and what we could say. We all see the potential. We see the opportunities that this community has. We have to make sure that we don't send the message that we're done. We have to make sure that we don't send the message that we think we're done. But we're comfortable inviting people, inviting them to invest, inviting them to come in and be a part. We had a great discussion about Pulaski, Virginia today is a community where you can be an early adopter. You can be ahead of the curve. You can get in while the getting is good. And you can be a part of this community. And I think that's one of your strongest assets, especially from an economic development messaging standpoint. And then fourth and final is the graphic and using a similar approach to graphics to create that continuity. So with that understanding of the branding toolbox, I just want to go through real quick and show you some of the things. Now, believe it or not, um, just because the high school colors are, is it maroon? Maroon. I, you can't ever tell if it's maroon or garnet or, or crimson or it's a maroon and gold. Just because your high school colors are maroon and gold does not mean that your primary colors have to be maroon. As we went through the system, we did try to get colors that were very similar as accent colors that tied into that. But we wanted a broad color spectrum that really denoted a sense of energy and vibrancy for the community. So um, I don't think anybody would be surprised in, in blues and greens. And then we kind of picked this, this goldish orange that we really felt like connected with energy. And then we went in and we uh, pulled that burgundy and we did a, a lighter, brighter, uh, but still kind of on the orange side accent there. So we've got these colors that allow us to set that foundation and start to build off of them. The second thing we looked at was the typefaces. We selected three typefaces as your primary typefaces, as your main set. That doesn't mean those are the only three you can use, but since the advent of the computer and Microsoft Word where you can just hit that little font button and all of a sudden you have 80 different choices, People have gotten really good at trying every single one out on one, one poster, you know? Um, and believe it or not, less is more when it comes to those typefaces. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the decisions I made. First of all, the primary typeface. I knew that I wanted something that was traditional. I wanted something that was very classic, that could be appropriate in a historic setting, but also have the opportunity to look progressive. So I selected this, it's a serif typeface, but it has some very, very interesting features, and you'll actually see it a little bit more when I show you the word mark, but things like the C, you can see they have this very stylized. So one of the things that is important when you select a typeface like this is you want it to have some sort of element to it that makes it appear unique so that the consistent use of it over and over does create that connection. So I picked one that gave us the opportunity to do that, but it also had just a very attractive, balanced P, which I put a lot of focus on the first letter of your name. Um, then with this secondary, this secondary and the accent are both from the same family. They're both called Burton. Um, this is called Burton Base. It is a sans serif typeface. The technical term that I learned in college means sans serif means it doesn't have doohickeys on little things that come out of it. Um, sans serif is much more industrial in nature, it's more uh, content neutral, so you can use it a lot for cleaner uh, applications, but this one's got a nice link to it, it's nice and bold. Burton also has a lot of different options, so you can use the clean one, you can use the shadowed one, you can use the inline one, so it gives you that opportunity for brand extension. Then the accent is Burton script. I wanted you to be able to have some sort of accent typeface that fit in with the others, but accent typefaces are, are kind of interesting. Most communities go through this process. We're pretty, 
so we need to per- pick a pretty fast pace. And therefore, they pick a sprint. Or we're old, we're historic, so we're going to pick papyrus, because it looks like it was written on a scroll. So, yeah. um, script typefaces are very hard to read. That's okay. That's why it's an accent. In design, there are certain times where you actually use harder to read typefaces to draw people deeper into what you're trying to say. So you have to understand the legibility is less, but it serves a strategic purpose in your messaging. So now we've got our colors, we've got our typefaces, and then from there, this is kind of that word type, and you can see it's got this really, really nice S, and it sounds like I'm a design nerd, you can tell, but it just, it's very attractive, but it also, it's not over the top, it, it, it can exist very, very nicely, and I did desi- decide early on that I wanted all caps to be our primary usage. I feel like that presents the word with a very solid foundation. When you think about the word type as a graphic itself, it gives you this really nice rectangle. Everything will always be rectangular, so it allows you this modular design. Now then from there, there were several values that we heard about over and over again. I just we, we kind of process them, and I want to share some back to you. Um, you have a history of makers, a history of being makers, of creating things. And the things that you create, whether you're building furniture, whether you're creating, you know, starting businesses, whether you're making this product, or you're, you're even creating memories, you're starting adventures, you're starting vacation, you, you're doing all kinds of things here. Um, so that history of makers was something that we really liked. Um, this phrase that we finally landed on was focused on the peak. And we like that for a couple of reasons. Both the, the idea of there is a strong push to reclaim and reconnect Peak Creek as it runs through the heart of your community. But you also are setting an aspirational goal and you're focused on achieving that goal. So it has that nice duality of purpose. I try not to be too, too cutesy with wording, but I, I liked the, the double entendre there. Um, the simple word industrious kept coming, uh, coming up to me. You know, you're an industrious community. Not just from an industry standpoint, but from a mindset and a, and a work ethic standpoint. And I think that's a really nice thing. To me, industrious people are people who have always had a pedigree of having to create their own solutions, and they've never thought of that as being creative. They, they don't necessarily connect that much with the word creativity, because they just file it away as that's how we do things. And I really, really like that kind of humble approach to ingenuity. Fourth, prime for early adopters. I really do believe that your community offers the opportunity for people to invest in. Now, the hope is, and I think you're at this very interesting point, and I want to speak candidly because I think that that this, this is a pivotal point. You're a community that has proven that out uh, people from outside the community see value in investing in. And sometimes when somebody from outside the community comes in and starts investing, Sometimes you're happy, sometimes you're suspect, you know? We need to make sure that as a community, we are using the successes that we have witnessed to help motivate and stoke investment from multiple levels, multiple directions, and making sure that we find and continue to have ways that our own local community can invest, whether it's investment of time, whether it's investment of vision or whether it's investment of resources into continually shifting the town quest. And then finally, this just rich collection, trails, paths, parks, lakes, and outdoors. Now, obviously that isn't anything, everything, but we, we have, have a, a nice, succinct list. Now, from those values, we always like to draft what we call a brand statement. And this will be a, a, about four or five slides and I just want to share this and read it to you now. We are Pulaski, Virginia, known worldwide for the exceptional workmanship of furniture that bears our name. 
Glaske has sustained an industrious character even as our economy has evolved. Our industry of today is defined by perseverance, productivity, and a pioneering spirit. Glaske's roots run deep, and our pride in where we've come from is equaled only by our excitement in what lies ahead. As we look to the future, our focus is on our peak, Peak Creek. Its renewal is a testament to the devotion and hard work of our citizens as we once again make it the lifeblood of our community. That future is on display in the bustling stands of our restored historic baseball stadium and from the guests at our boutique hotel that now anchors our downtown, both of which are proving catalysts for new investment. Glaske's potential expands each day in the ingenuity of our entrepreneurs. Whether handcrafting sweet treats in downtown or fine-tuning bicycles for those that pedal along the New River Trail, our businesses have laid the foundation for downtown activity that continues to grow. We are Glaske. The opportunity of today blends with the tradition of innovation to create the Pulaski spirit. That spirit is hard to miss, whether you're hitting the trails, restoring historic buildings, or investing in new startups. We are reaching new peaks with every passing day. We are Pulaski, Virginia, where your new path begins. So that concept of where your new path begins is giving us an opportunity to speak both economically as well as recreationally, as this is a prime place to start. And it even makes that, that invitation while also acknowledging that you are going to have to put some effort in. It's not, it's not going to just be, you know, a leisurely, it's not your smoothly paved interstate road of begins here. It, it's the path. What path will you carve? What so when you tie all of those elements together, what we're recommending for an overall community identity looks something kind of like this. Very clean and simple. Now, I want to be the first to say, because it happens every time, you are a town, you are the county seat, and I understand that the county courthouse is owned by the county. Okay? Again, who built it? I can guarantee you I've done this for 15 years, it is absolutely appropriate for that to be a symbol of your place. Okay? One of the biggest reasons why the courthouse is such an important element in this community, it, it serves a couple goals. First of all, it is a truly stunning and unique courthouse. I see courthouses all over this country, and this courthouse is extremely beautiful. It's that combination of white zone, the, the construction, I mean, it really is fantastic. But the other thing that it does is it serves as a vertical visual element of where the heart of the community is. One of our biggest issues here is we have a lot of people who don't make it all the way into the core of our community, yet they think they've been here. So we want to set a visual standard saying, if you haven't seen it, you haven't seen us. Now, there's a lot of stuff that we can do. Um, I, I don't want to dig too much into elements on the skyline, because that's something we can dig into. We can add gazebos. We can add roof lines of the depot. We can add those different things. But I wanted to make sure that there was a reference to some sort of historic style district while also referencing, and I do think that this is fair, if you notice there's a somewhat tall, boxy building on the right-hand side of it, um, you just so happen to have a somewhat tall, boxy building in your community that very much shows on your skyline. So making that part of who you are, because it does make you different, it makes you look different. Now, from there, um, making sure that you have the different options and variations, this is what we call a reverse version, so it goes in a dark background, having single color versions, having stacked versions, having horizontal versions, and then even doing a 
more simply stylized, badge style version. So you start to have the right tool for the right application. And again, having those variations that work in reverse and, and work in those one colors. But then also being able to have the different marketing based variations, like simply having one that, that is historic proactive, a tool that helps you to tell that you have this, his, this history and this place that's worthy of seeing and exploring and digging into. So I did a couple different variations of that graphically. I think one of the things that people think of when they think of branding is you develop a brand and therefore you have one logo, one and only one logo, and everything looks exactly like that. I actually believe in communities. The more versatility and variations you have, the more opportunity to have that right message at the right time, the more success you will have. In even creating stylized versions of a monogram, so you can have just this simple P. I mean, wouldn't it be awesome if you could own the letter P? You know, so being able to do those things that truly make it yours are very, very important. You also have initiatives that are going through. So things like Pulaski Rising. This is a concept that we are completely and totally in favor. We actually, the first time we ever did something similar to this, Aaron and I were working in Wake Forest, North Carolina. And we were coming in as part of a branding study, but that branding study came after a major downtown master plan, then after a, um, a parking study that had occurred, and then immediately after us, there was a wayfinding study. Now, as citizens, you kept getting invited to these input meetings, and you're sitting there going, they're going to ask me the same question. I'm going to tell this another consultant the same answer. And it, it, it feels like we're spinning our wheels. And they weren't really spinning their wheels. In fact, they were systematically implementing all of the things that came out of that plan, but the citizens didn't know it. So we came up with this concept that we need to bring the plan so that every time something is part of that master plan, visually and easily, we can sit there and we can simply hide into that. So their plan was called Renaissance Plan. So we simply took the first two letters, RE, and we talked about things like revitalize, renew, restore. And so this, this little icon we created with the RE became the symbol of that plan. Well, Plasky Rising is very much that same thing. Plasky Rising is the acknowledgement that we're not where we want to go, the acknowledgement that we need to all do it together, and the acknowledgement that it's happening. And we heard very, very loud and clear that is a sun rising. And that is where we are as a community. It's a new day, and the sun is on our side. So being able to take that typeface, those colors, but then being able to give the individual graphics so that those initiatives have their own identities. Now, another thing that we talked about was simply acknowledging that you are ready for development. You, are, you want to create a business-friendly environment. This community has been doing a lot to fix, change, adapt, evolve, whatever. It's been very, very introspective in that process. And one of the best things in the world to do is fix the working before you tell everybody, hey, it's fixed, you know? So um, I think based off what we heard that the community, if you're not there now, you're really, really close to being able to simply acknowledge that you are redevelopment ready. And with things like Pulaski on Main and changes that are going on at the town level, you can deliver on that statement. And then being able to take that very simple standard of design and start to apply it to amenities that exist here in the town. So here you just see three of the park logos. Um, some people might be bothered by the fact that the lake is green. I get that. If you want to turn the logo around. So you've got Gatewood Park, you've got Heritage Park, and actually found kind of an interesting little footbridge over there at Heritage Park and used that um, as part of that. And then, of course, the gazebo over in Jackson Park. So I'm trying to create a very simple standard that allows you to take it and run with it. One of the biggest things that a community needs from a branding system is the need to not always depend on a professional designer to implement everything. And our hopes are that by creating a foundation, it makes the decision process of growth and expansion a lot easier. 
I have worked on event committees that have taken three and a half months to decide on what their event logo is going to look like. And everything that you've created, that you're seeing right now, has been created since yesterday afternoon. So the foundation is there to help us grow and move very quickly. Now from there, we start to talk about the destination brand. And I, I wanted to do something here that was a little bit cleaner, a little bit more contemporary. And one of the reasons that I wanted to do this, and, and to me, like I, I started out working with different stylized versions of the letter P. Um, I'm a big believer and a big supporter in the Main Street movement and the Main Street model that exists nationwide. Um, pilot program that came out of the National Trust in 1977. The program itself is currently going through a refresh nationally where they're looking at their four-point approach, their quote trademark four-point approach. But I really do believe that these four areas of focus, what we're now referring to as design, events, organization, and vitality or economic vitality are those four solid legs of a, a revitalization stool for a downtown. So what you have here is you have this, this downtown that can, can potentially overlap with the identity of a Main Street organization. Now that might, Main Street organization might be Kulaski on Main as it is now, or it might be an evolution, an emerging, and an amalgamation. Who knows? That's not mine, that's not mine to tell you. you know, that, Every community deserves the ability to chart that, that course, but I think that having that community grassroots organization where people can feel like they're playing a part of the revitalization, even if it means they're just coming out to an event and volunteering and pulling trash bags out of those, those barrels and getting it on the trash trailer, they play a part in the revitalization. So being able to tie those things in together I think goes a long way, but to me, the key to any brand system is what we call event extension. Once we have those typefaces, that approach to graphic and that color palette, we can take the events that go on in the community and we can roll them in. Now, here's a disclaimer. I didn't ask any permission. Okay? So if you are involved in any event or organization that puts on any of the events I'm getting ready to show, please don't get angry at me. I'm simply trying to illustrate how you can dots with those events. So, Pulaski Fest. Okay, Pulaski Fest is a, a really great event. I looked at their current logo featuring a, a maple leaf and it, it kind of has a, a line through it now, but I looked back at the origins and, and tried to guess why the maple leaf was, was used and I think I got it, so I wanted to keep it around, but this just shows a very simple adaptation of that. But then, I see things like Concert series, summer concert series. Does it actually have a name? I don't really know. Like I look for it. Sometimes I found one name. Sometimes I found another. That is it. Rib, rib fest or rib feast or jazz and rib feast. Yeah, I saw four different versions of that. So you know, it's, it's trying to dig in, but being able to name those events so that that people that they're excited about going to them, but they also see that it's connected to one another. Easter egg hunt. Again, using those colors, those typefaces. Cruise ends. And being able to tie in that opportunity. And I'll tell you, I'm, I've got um, a couple 67 Mustangs that are in varying levels of complete and total destruction. And, um, but I know exactly the passion that these folks have. And, and I will tell you, there is nothing like going into a downtown district and see a street lined with classic cars and seeing those owners congregating and talking and sharing. And that's, th these are great events that go on in the community. Fourth of July, being able to tie that in. Again, I, I'm, I'm trying to show and illustrate that you can have a lot of diversity and a lot of ability to truly customize what each event looks like. But in using those <coughs> continuous elements, and you don't have to use all of them, it might just be a typeface here, it might just be a color there, but you have those varying levels of commitment. All time jamboree. Okay, I, I finally landed on it being called Rib Fest. Is it officially feast? No, Gotcha. 
Okay, so I literally, I actually thought, based off what I was looking on with the online presence and the different Facebook pages, I thought that it started out as Rib Feast and then moved to Rib Fest. But I can easily, easily change that. But you can see, and I, you can do any number of things with events like this. I mean, a Rib Fest is a pretty awesome event to have. So, um, uh, tree lighting. You know, finding ways that you can make events, um, even simple events. This is a really community-oriented event, being able to bring people in and, and share that together. So what you start to see through all of this is you start to see that not only are the organizations connecting the dots, but the positive experiences that people are having in your community are starting to be connected to one another. Now, from there, we move on to signage. Um, believe it or not, the signage in the community could use a little enhancement. <laughs> is that fair to say? Yeah. Um, so, this is what we're looking at for, this is just a, a recommendation of how you might apply the brand system to a U.S. Department of Transportation style appropriate wayfinding system. And I want to go through, I want to talk about a couple elements. This is a gateway sign. Um, now, obviously, the granite that, that we see so often in the community, the granite that this building that is constructed of, that came right here out of Peak Creek, to us is very much the most appropriate material to use in signage. There's a thing called the Department of Transportation that likes to make things slightly, we'll call it safer. So that means that you might have to have foam that looks like granite, um, that's breakaway and all those type of things, but I think we get the gist of what we're looking for here. Um, gateway signs, typically we see those at the corporate limits of communities. Sometimes we see them a little closer in. You actually see, I've dropped this sign in to where you currently have downtown gateway. Um, I would actually... I would argue the idea that it is good to announce arrival at least three times. Um, it definitely, if you're only going to announce arrival once, you should be announcing arrival closest in to the culvert. Most communities go out to the corporate limits, they put up that gateway sign, they think that it's welcoming, but in fact what it really is is we're sticking our flag. This is where we start. And then think about what you typically have to drive through in outskirts and commercial entry corridors before you get in to the historic course. So finding ways that you can repeat that. Now, here, what you see is you actually see what we call pole mountain gateway signs. These announce uh, arrivals into to districts. They announce arrival into places that have a more urban and closer feel. So you can do something there that makes some impact. These two signs are called trailblazer signs. You have different scales based off the size of the road, um, but being able to point out the different amenities that folks may, might need to go to. Now, these signs typically have no more than three destinations on them. And again, that's a, a federal um, standard from the MUTCD. And you can also make a smaller version of a trailblazer. Once it achieves pedestrian scale, and they call it, a lot of people call it, a, a, it's a pedestrian or bike scale. Um, you no longer have that same restriction. You don't have the same restriction on letter height. You don't have the same restriction on number of destinations. Because the theory is that people have an opportunity to truly stop and take in all the things that you're offering. A um, couple other things here. Parking signs, I'll talk about those more in a second. And uh, street banners, I'll talk about those more in a second. So everybody knows this sign. One of the biggest things that we heard was you've got this sign that welcomes you to historic downtown and then you drive through a corridor of closure. And, or perceived closure. Because, you know, one of the big things that we talked about was Big Blue has KTI in it. It's actually pretty well utilized. I don't know the percentage, but I, they're using four fours. Oh, right. Four out of five. So, you know, in my book, that's 80% utilized. Yet, the impression that it gives is that it's fake. So, making sure that you're using signage in a strategic way, this is simply showing how, you know, changing over to that more attractive gateway makes a different impact as you enter in. But um, 
But then, you know, to me, of all of these, one of the most important signs in the whole system is parking signs. I've worked in almost 500 communities, and I've never been to one that didn't have parking signs. Most of the time, though, the problem is not actually with parking capacity. It's even with parking awareness. People don't know where they can park or where they should park. It's with parking management. People don't like to pay for parking, and they don't like to enforce hourly ratings so there's not the appropriate circulation in parking. But I'll actually argue that the biggest problem that plagues parking isn't parking at all. It's the mindset of the consumer sprinkling a district. If you're downtown, and the businesses in your downtown operate with the exact same convenience mindset, that a customer going to a strip mall for the same service would have, then you're going to lose on parking every time. As your downtown continues to evolve, you will transition from a convenience consumer to a destination consumer. And with that transition will come a higher level of consumer motivation. So you will actually find people complaining a little bit less. The other thing that I will say is, as you go through, one of the biggest things communities do is they love to build parking garages. Or they love to talk about building parking garages. An average cost today is $22,000 per space to build a parking garage. And we worked in, in a community, if anybody's familiar with Somerville, South Carolina, just outside Charleston. Built a beautiful parking garage. I think it cost them almost $6 million. Do you know that they would not spend the money to put signs up to tell people where the parking garage was? So nobody parked there. And they couldn't figure out why. Same thing, Rochester, Michigan built a gorgeous parking garage, and because the parking garage cost money, they decided to charge people to park in the garage. But on street parking was free. I was like, no, you got this all wrong. Let people park in the garage for free and start charging for the street. Because you now invested in a lot of parking, and you need to get people going there. So, be really, really strategic with any parking uh, decisions that you make. And please, don't put too much weight on the single consumer who is frustrated because they had to park seven spaces away. That is a good indicator of the dynamics in the downtown. Now, as we walk around, we saw some of the current banners. Um, <laughs> this is a... I am sure that these were gorgeous when they went up. But, but they, they have faded a little. <laughs> um, so one of the big things that I do want to show, I, I've got a couple recommendations. There's no right answer or wrong answer. But there is a strategy that I want to share with you all that I think is very, very important for your community. We heard a lot of talk about cleanliness, building owners not taking care of the buildings, things not being as pristine as you would. Okay, the problem with street banners is typically when you sit down to design a street banner, you start with a white screen. Instead of thinking about the environment in which that banner is going to go. So the majority of banners that I have seen are over-designed. We want banners in your community to create a sense of continuity, possibly in the early time, to create a visual screen so people don't notice what's behind them as much, and, and kind of lower the, the ceiling and the visual kind of. What I would actually say, you have a very nice grid structure in your downtown. You currently have a one-way pair, one-way street going in, one-way street going out. I'm showing you several different designs. You can use anything or you can start fresh, but all of these have a couple things in common. First of all, they are a one-color screen on a solid color banner. So all of these are the cheapest possible production. The second thing that they all have is even though they have design on them, they have minimized the impact of the design so that color background can be used to create a sense of continuity. I'm showing you four. I don't care what you do, but I will tell you, please do not decide to put in a sequence of banners and put a yellow one on this one, then a green one on the next one, then a blue one on the next one. Pick streets, pick corridors, 
and have solid colors on the middle. So that your entry might be blue, where your exit might be green, and your cross nodes might be yellow. Create ways so your banners actually help people to understand where the downtown district is, where they should explore, and how to understand the traffic flow. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, then from there, I always love putting the logo on things. Um, whether we're talking about rack cards and brochures, simply to be able to share um, the look and feel of the community, bringing people into the community. Whether we're talking about materials, marketing materials, collateral materials, apparel, merchandising. I think the brand should be able to be made available to businesses throughout your community for your charge. And I hope that people start to profit from it. Because what that means is they are giving consumers an opportunity to show pride in flag. So whether it's hats, we've got a couple different designs on hats, we've got um, shirts, we've got shopping bags, we've got water bottles, I don't care what it is. If you're a coffee shop and you want to make coffee mugs, go for it. You know, get the brand in folks' hands. Making its way onto town vehicles and things like that so they start to see this, this continuous identity. And then finally, being able to show the, the message in a way that looks professional, looks clean. We just put together a couple just to kind of highlight that. And you can see we've taken that tagline where your new path begins and we've created a way that it becomes infinitely expandable. You know, where your weekend escape begins. Where your history begins. Where your show begins. Where your refreshment begins. Where your dessert begins. Where your collection begins. Where your wardrobe begins. And literally all of these photos I took in the past two days just walking around the community. So you, you do have a lot to offer. And um, in closing, I, we heard a lot about this guy. Um, and, you know, this I, I actually took this picture while driving in this morning. And I'm glad that she put me here. Um, and I, I just wanted to show you just... You know, very simply, with we talked a little bit about the impact of paint and, and putting a logo up there so people know what business, what, that there's a business in there that's being used. That visual impact, that very, very simple gesture. And these are the kind of things that are going to be needed to help your citizens turn back into a bank. Um, when we talk about marketing, I think everybody's mind typically is automatically going to external marketing. We want to draw in those external investors as well as internal investors, but one of the biggest byproducts of being able to have a system like this is being able to remind and convince our own citizens why this community is worthy of so much effort. We believe that it is, and it is, and we need to remind them. And again, you know, I go back to the illusion that I've shared before with classic cars. I, I walk around to cruise them, and everybody else's car looks better than mine. Because I remember every time it broke down, I remember every single scratch, every single problem, every single time it left me stranded, every time that clutch to that rod fell off on I 85 going south, and I was stranded in the middle of the summer on vinyl seats, no air conditioning. I remember. We carry the baggage for our own community, while other folks from outside are able to come in and appreciate it for what it is, and appreciate it for what it could be. So with that, that's what we were able to do over the past day or so. Hopefully, it's a, um, you can see some of the strategy that we're recommending and see some of the, the power that can come from connecting those dots. And we said we were going to do our best to keep this right in an hour, so we're doing pretty good. But I'd love to open it up for questions, comments, initial thoughts. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to be shy. I'm Terry Sternberg, pastor of Trinity Lutheran Church at the corner of Fifth and Washington. Great. And I love everything I see. This is just beautiful. My background was in marketing communications and an industrial company, so I mean, I'm just all about logos and titles. It's just beautiful. Well, thank you. concern I had in your um, branding statement mm -hmm. was that it's a lot about economics, industry, building stuff, but as a pastor, I care a lot about lives, education, social fabric, things like that. And the only thing I notice is that there's really no sense about the 
so good at quality of life right. for citizens living here. Have you kicked that around at all? Absolutely. You know, systems, our special programs. Absolutely. And, and okay, so I'll give you a short answer and a long answer, unfortunately. But the short answer is we absolutely heard about that, saw it, and, and feel like it is very valuable. The the other side of that is typically one of our biggest problems is we've been writing brand statements that go on forever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, multiple, multiple slides, and, and right. it's just, you know, as a narrative, it gets a little long. But I want to talk about what that statement is intended to do. And, and our hope and our desire is that it is a living statement, not a singular fixed statement. It is a statement that constantly grows and evolves. And it's also designed in such a way so that you can add and remove paragraph by paragraph to say what you want to say. So we will be more than happy to create an additional kind of self-contained paragraph that could be one of those modular right. It is very difficult, as you can imagine, to hit every single element. But I think one of the biggest things that I think sometimes as we try to balance that local pride versus economic development initiative, seesaw. I think sometimes it's easy to lean over on economic development and forget that those statements that you're talking about are going to be one of the greatest ways to stoke that local pride and, and really remind people why and what is important about the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, thank you for that. How does the brand statement get used? Is it an internal document? It's internal, but it also a lot of times um, we have communities where they'll pull out bits of it as part of ad copy. We'll, we'll see it used in different ways. One of my favorite uses of it, honestly, was Pascagoula, Mississippi. We wrote the brand statement. The mayor liked it so much that he started to print out 8 by 10 copies of it and, and throw them in a frame, and he'd give them to business leaders throughout the community. So all of a sudden, this consistent kind of mantra started showing up on the office walls of all of these different business leaders in the community. I thought that was a really cool way. We've had some folks that have used it as voiceovers for videos for the community. So there are a lot of different things that can go on. Right. Any other thoughts or comments? Yes, ma'am. I like your your um, like when you had the, the longer statement. Mm -hmm. It was my eyes full. Um, I get word pictures out of it. And it really, it to me, it, it um, really had the excitement of the new, um, influence of the old, and kind of a cozy feeling to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? A contained yeah. feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that's that's really, I think you captured quite well what it is. Right. This is a small and rising community. Mm -hmm.
Well, and to me, that's one of the coolest things. Again, I was trying to talk. I was talking about how that word peak all by itself. You know, you are surrounded by mountains. The the concept of peak as it relates to mountains is a valuable one. The concept of peak as it relates to vision is a powerful one. And here, you also have this third meaning of this creek, which is like this this connected tissue and part of the reason that that you were here and located and laid out the way you were. So it's kind of a cool series of of connections. We we definitely... Right, right. All right, it's, it's one o'clock. Any other yeah. I just want to say on behalf of the town, I think we've got more than our money for our guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, I'm going to share with you real quickly uh, next steps. What We've actually recorded this presentation today. We're going to post it online and we'll share that, uh, that link with the town so that if you want to go back and you want to review and dig in a little bit deeper, see things a little closer, you are more than welcome to. Um, we're going to have a period of, of a couple of weeks or so where we're going to listen for refinements and, and we're going to get back together on the recommendations, tweak and move those towards final. And then one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to create what's called a style guide. Yeah. The style guide is a digital document that defines every color, defines every typeface, tells you how to use this, how not to use it. Every logo you saw becomes yours. We save it in five different file formats, and we give you every access, you know, every resource you need. It is all going to be accessible through one link. So you'll be able to share that link with the business community, share it with the organization, and they will have access to all of that. In addition to that, all the photography we take now becomes yours. You will own the trademark and copyright. So what we try to do is we truly try to remove any of those hurdles that typically occur when it comes to brand implementation. A lot of times communities, they, they get a little nervous about, oh, well, if we let anybody use it, what if they do something we don't like? Well, um, in my entire career, I've only ever seen that happen once, believe it or not. And it was, it was actually right up the road, right up 81 in Stanton, Virginia. Stanton was a community that took their brand, trademarked their brand, had the resources locked down and never shared it with anybody. I mean, they, their individual internal groups had it, but they didn't really openly share it. But an individual in the region went and stole the logo off the website and put it as an uh, app icon and called their app the official visitor's guide to Stanton and started making money off of it. You know? So there wasn't anything that clamping it down would have protected it from. We want you to use it, and we think that that mindset of open access really goes a long way. There are a couple really cool metrics that can happen there. If businesses try to incorporate that that logo or any of that brand messaging into their uh, marketing, you can track that co-op that way. Another thing that I always like to do is if folks use it to make merchandise, I like to ask for just rough estimates and what they sold. And then that way, I love to be able to go back to a council a year later and say, over the first year, we saw this many dollars in leveraged co-op advertising, and we saw this many dollars in um, that went directly into the hands of our business owners because of the existence of our brand. So um, we'll be moving towards that as quickly as we can. And um, one of the biggest things I always like to ask for is if there are things that, especially great extension, if there are things, organizations, or events that have not been included, but you would like to have included, we truly believe the more the merrier. The more we can take this brand and help people implement it, the better. So if you have anything that you're involved in and you think might benefit from this, is it okay if I send this to you, Nicole? If you wouldn't mind um, emailing Nicole Hare at the town, and she'll get that stuff over to us and, and keep a list for us, and we will put it together for you. So, yes, ma'am. It is, I'll have to find it, but if you, you have a card, I'll email it to you. I don't mind going ahead and using that. Okay, great. I've got it right now, but I just ran out of the sales. Burton is the secondary. The primary is almost like that. The primary is actually, I think it's called Savora. If it's not there. Yeah, I've got it. If I can 
the last 